ओलिक्स नेटवर्क 18 मिशन पोषण भविष्य रोशन Welcome back. You're watching Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Now let's just focus back home. Yesterday on the Lal Street, it was a third straight day of losses. Nifty gave up the 10,600 mark. The Sensex too lost more than 100 points, giving up the 35,000 mark in the ordeal. Mid caps that there the carnage continues. They ended over a percent lower. The banks too fared better to close flat. However, in the red today, the big cue of course is the RBI policy. But for everything else, we have Sonia Shinoy with us. Good morning, Sonia. Hi Mangalam good morning yes as you rightly pointed out the momentum is clearly on the downside and with the bears we saw it yesterday the nifty although it did try to recover in late trade it couldn't manage to close above the 10600 mark but what it has done is held above the 100 day moving average of 10550 now there are lack of positive triggers and you know this market is falling under its own weight as per at least what the uh, experts have indicated to us and the mid cap carnage is something that is worrying the street of course the bse bringing more companies under this additional uh, enhanced surveillance measures is not making things any better 400 bsc stocks hit the lower circuit yesterday and now the mid cap index is down 14% in 2018 versus the nifty which is up about half or percent so severe underperformance seen in the mid cap space today of course we have the rbi policies so that will dominate mind space for the uh, better part of the day uh, now it's going to be a close call there are so, there are some uh, experts who believe that a rate hike could come in today and if it comes in it will be the first rate hike in four and a half years by the rbi as we know inflation has been higher than the rbi's 4% uh, target a surge in co core inflation higher crude prices are the key risks that the rbi has so that uh, the you know the uh, commentary from the rbi will also be very important there are expectations that it could be a hawkish uh, hike so let's see how that plays out um, for the us markets we haven't really been following global cues we've been you know falling under our own weight but nevertheless the dow ended flat the nasdaq touched a record high because of technology stocks there but all eyes definitely will be on the rbi policy today okay and sonia what about stocks well in individual stocks you know uh, ekta there are a lot of the banks the nbfc stocks that have been under pressure because of the way funding costs have risen so i expect uh, you know that entire pocket to be in focus today as well uh, glenmark uh, as you yourself have you know told us um, cnbc tv 18 has gotten access to the form 483 issued by the us fda to the pithampur unit five observations were seen there so glenmark could be in focus sugar stocks once again could be a traders delight because there is that cabinet meeting today there's an expectation of an 8000 or bailout package for the sugar sector so let's see how that plays out and tata motors it's very interesting you know the company has been holding a lot of analysts and investor meets there was one analyst day yesterday where they spoke about cost cutting initiatives and how the, they've reduced costs by almost 2000 crores in fy18 and further cost cutting is expected uh, you know uh, from the management so that's something that i would watch out for as well All right, Sonia. In fact, uh, we we will uh, continue our talk about Tata Motors itself. Uh, what were the key takeaways? You did allude to a few of them. You have some more. Yes I do in fact you know uh, not just cost cutting initiatives that I spoke about uh, they expect a continued turnaround in FY19 so that's interesting now they have spoken about plans to um, to disclose the uh, PNL of the commercial vehicles and the passenger vehicles business separately they spoke about it in the past but yesterday at the analyst day they confirmed those plans and what this does is gives you increased clarity on the turnaround in the stand alone business mm. so that's something that the street has taken very positively they've retraded their ebit margin guidance at 3 to 5% over fy19 to 21 and 5 to 7% in the longer term so that's a good thing they expect an 8% industry growth for the passenger vehicle business over the next 5 years that's a compounded 8% growth and they expect a low double digit growth for the commercial vehicle industry they are seeing a rise in e-commerce trucks and in higher tonnage trucks so that's something interesting there but mostly positive takeaways from the analyst day Okay all right Sonia thanks very much for that well it seems as though the, the Tata group companies are holding many analyst meets so mm -hmm. for example Tata Power also held an analyst meet time for a break now but up next CNBC TV 18 has access the form 43 issued by the US FDA to Glenmark's Pithampur unit details once we're back State Bank of India led consortium of bankers had short, has shortlisted 11 power plants for acquisition by new owners under the Samadhan scheme the name given to SBI scheme of asset management and debt change structure the power plants include Lanku Infratech's uh, Anpara project in Uttar Pradesh and JP Powers 
uh, Nigri project in Madhya Pradesh. Other projects under Samadhan belong to Jindal India, Thermal Power, KSK and INT Bharat Power. The RBI stressed acid regulations require that resolution be reached in 180 days after which the assets will face liquidation. So if the Samadhan scheme fails to attract buyers for these plants, they may go into liquidation in September itself. Let's hear out the Power Minister for more details. You know, the uh, SBI scheme is called Samadhan. So the, uh, they are addressing those assets which are complete or near complete. And uh, the idea is to carry out an assessment as to what will be the sustainable debt for these assets. And uh, then the remaining debt, which is unsustainable, will be converted into equity, which will be held by the banks, the lender banks. About 24% will uh, be allowed to remain with the promoters. Mm -hmm. And then the banks will, can, will bid out this equity uh, to people who want to run this, these plants. The idea is that these plants will be run. And the idea is that the valuation which is achieved would be somewhere near their true valuation. Mm -hmm. That's the objective which we have. Now, what we don't want is for valuable assets which uh, were constructed at, let's say, 5 crores, 6 crores, 7 crores a megawatt, mm -hmm. should not be sold off for a crore a megawatt. That will be a windfall any, for anybody who buys it. The REC scheme is also a variation of this. Mm -hmm. Now, they, uh, propose, they propose to form some, an SPV which will hold these assets mm -hmm. and run these assets till the uh, situation improves, which it is improving. The demand is growing up. It will continue growing up. Okay. As the demand increases, as the coal uh, availability increases, you, and you will find more and more PPAs coming forth mm -hmm. as we tighten up on the regulations and ensure that uh, uh, you know the discounts by power through long-term mechanisms. So th then, when the situation improves, then if you divest these assets, you will be able to get something near their true value. That is the idea. I wanted to understand what happens to spinning reserve, which is required to balance renewable and coal-based power. Yeah, yeah. So the, we are working on flexibilization. Mm -hmm. uh, up till now, balancing has not been an issue as yet. Mm -hmm. But we are preparing for a time when balancing may become an issue with more and more renewables being in right. injected. Yeah. <coughs> so because of this, we are beginning the time of their tariff, mm -hmm. so that the gas-based capacity also comes into play. And uh, the gas-based capacity along with hydro and the flexibilization will together do the balancing. All right, and the stock on our radar will be Glenmark. Uh, CNBC TV 18 has exclusively accessed Form 483 issued by the U.S. regulator to the company's Pithampur unit. Ekta, you've gone through the 483. What do you make of the observations? Well, obviously, the stock is going to be in the red today simply because of these kind of observations which have been issued. Now, for example, the observations include accuracy of test methods not established and documented. Lab controls don't include scientifically sound sampling plans. Failure to thoroughly review discrepancy in batch distribution. So now uh, it doesn't outright come out and you know s mm. uh, scream data integrity or any such issue. Uh, but uh, the problem obviously would be that remediation would be undertaken by the company and that would probably take its own time. Now in terms of a couple of important points to watch out for, uh, this is basically an oral solid dosage facility. The inspection took place between the 14th of May to the 24th of May but interestingly during the inspection itself they had received an approval for a cholesterol drug called Wellcol Generic. Now this was from the particular facility. Generally if you receive an approval during the inspection or maybe mm -hmm. a little after the inspection, most of the analysts don't give it that much credit. Okay. Why is that? Is because it was during the inspection and the decision um, in terms of what exactly the plant should do when it comes to the observations which have eventually be, been issued and hence any sort of new approvals comes in only a little after the inspection closes. So there is a little bit of a lag that takes place and um, the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest uh, positive which you can get post a USFT inspection is to receive an approval from that particular okay. facility after some time has gone by. Not a day after, right. not a two not two days after, but maybe say three weeks after or a month after to know that the USFT has assessed those observations 
and is then okay with the facility. So, in a sense, so you can't really mm. give it that much credit that they have received an approval during the inspection. Yes. Um, you will have to obviously watch out for uh, whether they receive an approval from this particular plan going forward and how exactly they react. So, in a sense, it will be a bigger positive if there was a, an approval to come from from the Pithampur unit in the near future, say. Not even a month or two. I mean, it could even be now and it All could right. indicate the same thing. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Ekta. We will keep an eye out on Glenmark and also watch out for whether there is an approval coming in from that plant or not in the near future. With that, we'll slip into a short break. But as we count down to the RBI policy up next, we will tell you what the CNBC TV18 Citizens Monetary Policy Committee is expecting from the governor today.